Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. We're going to start in just a moment. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. to start. I see you guys coming in. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you. We're about to get started. Uh, it's 6.30. to get started good time tonight I see you I see you all I see you Liz and Charles and Miss Johnson and Jerry and Joan Bill, I see you all. Regina, Francesca, Ann, Frederick, I see you all. Gracie, Smythe, Amen. Hi, Jelly, I see you here. I sound a little hoarse. Uh, praise God, I'm not hoarse. Man. If so, it's a stallion. To God be the glory. I can hear Ann now saying, Pastor's a mess. <laughs> uh, bless you all. Bless you all. We're going to start at, at 6.32. Hi, Joyce and Ken. There's my little Cynthia. Leanne. Bless you all. God bless you all. Are unmuted. God bless you all. Well, I want to thank you uh, for coming in tonight um, and sharing with us as we attempt to share uh, from the Word of God. Um, I have inspired uh, by the Lord and by our Sunday school lessons. I want to share tonight around the topic, wise up. All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. Wise up and get wisdom. Wise up and get wisdom. Hi, Terry. Wise up and get wisdom. Amen. Wise up and get wisdom. I'm sorry I don't have my slides for you tonight. Um, but I can send you my notes. Uh, I will send my notes. Amen. Someone said I'm kind of hoarse from uh, all that hallelujah shout. Uh, no, I was actually singing. I was actually singing. I was trying to help the gentleman who was singing at the funeral yesterday. I don't think he did my song any justice. Um, I was singing. Um, uh, my soul is anchored in the Lord. And so I wanted to make sure he got it right in order to give our brother uh, the proper go in. So I was singing and I was singing out of the depths of my heart and all through here. And so that's probably what you're hearing, Francesca. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, tonight, let's go in uh, the presence of God and ask his blessing upon our time together. Let's go in the presence of God and ask his blessing upon our time together. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful to be called by your name. And now, Lord, we're humbling ourselves, coming before you, asking you to forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us, O oh God, 
God to uh, seek your face, Lord, seek your face to desire to dwell in the beauty of your tabernacle tonight. We have come, Lord, with our hearts hungry for what you have uh, preordained for us to receive tonight. We know that you speak to us all at once and say something different to each and every one of us because that's the kind of God you are. So right now, God, we yield to your will and say, feed us with your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, those of you who are let me check those on the phone if they can hear me. Okay. Uh, those of you on the phone, can you hear me okay? Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, I'm going to place you all on mute. And we're going to go into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles or your apps, all participants are muted and they can unmute them. If you have your Bible or your app, I invite your attention to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Um, and I want to look at the fourth proverb, the fourth, uh, we can call it chapter, the fourth chapter of Proverbs. And I want to look at verses 1 through 13. And tonight I've chosen to use the New Living Translation, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 14, the New Living Translation. Uh, it reads thus wise, my children, listen when your father corrects you, pay attention and learn good judgment, for I'm giving you good advice. Don't turn away from my instructions, for I too was once my father's son, tenderly loved as my mother's only child. My father taught me, take my words to heart, follow my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, develop good judgment. Don't forget my words or turn away from them. Don't turn your back on wisdom for she will protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Let me read that again. I'm in verse 7 of Proverbs chapter 4. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will place a lovely wreath on your head. She will present you with a beautiful crown. Verse 10, my child, listen to me and do as I say and you will have a long good life. I will teach you wisdom's way, ways and lead you in straight paths. When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. Uh, foundation I've read for us, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. And again, I've chosen to use the New Living Translation for our reading tonight. I want to talk about uh, wise up and get wisdom. Wise up and get wisdom. Uh, uh, John Piper helped me with this. Uh, also, a few others, excuse me. And a few other scholars, friends, helped me with this and this uh, outline of wise up and get wisdom. And I also want to thank the Sunday school, uh, the teachers and the leaders for doing such a wonderful job in introducing this topic of wisdom in our adult Sunday school class. And I invite the rest of you to join in on the conference call on Sunday at 9.15. Uh, they got a great lesson in wisdom coming this Sunday. 
uh, ninth team for uh, adult Sunday school class. Wise up and get wisdom. I found out in the little few years I've been living that everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to be happy. Every living human being wants to be happy. And this longing is not a bad thing. It's actually good. To desire to be happy is actually a good thing. But evil consists in trying to find happiness in ways that displease and dishonor God. Goodness, on the other hand, consists in finding happiness only in ways that please and honor God. And the truth of the matter is, God has created the world and instilled in the world moral laws that the more we choose to glorify God, the happier we will literally be. God made us to be not temporarily happy, but eternally happy. Now, it does, this does not mean that there is no discipline. This does not mean that there is no self-denial. Jesus tells us in Luke, uh, Luke, uh, well, let's use Mark. Mark chapter 8, 34 and 35. He says, if any man would come after me, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Listen to what Jesus goes on to say. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Jesus is literally telling us, my brothers and sisters, that uh, self-denial is a means to save our lives. Self-denial is a means to saving our lives and thus securing happiness. Now, when we say self-denial, as we've taught in union many times, it literally means um, to deny self-rule. I am no longer my own. I belong to the Lord. I've been brought the price. I am not Lord of my life. I am subject and subject myself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So self-denial is not doesn't mean I don't have uh, desires, this, that, and the other, but I yield all of my desires. We are to yield all of our desires to the desires of the Lord. This simply means we must stop seeking our happiness in our ways and start seeking it in God's way. Let me say that again. We must stop seeking our happiness in our ways and only seek it in God's way. We as Christians, we are to differ from the world in that we are to seek our happiness and everything else that we need from God and not from temple or created things. Everything that we need, we as children of God, subjects of his kingdom, heirs of his throne, we are to seek it from the Lord. He is remembered God is our source. He chooses to use resources. God is our source. God is our source. Um, in Hebrews chapter 12, we learn from Jesus, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. We learn from Jesus, who for the joy set before him, 
he endured the cross. That the joy we seek may require us to choose to suffer for Christ's sake. Here's some ways in which we suffer uh, or which we can suffer. Number one is we are called to endure. I know we want what we want when we want it, but we are called to endure. We are called to endure. Amen. We're called to endure. We're also called to be patient. We're also called to be very patient. My brothers and sisters, we're also called to be very patient. I understand my Wi Fi is breaking up, and so I am going to come out of it on my other devices. We want what we want when we want it, but we can't always get what we want when we want it. We have to trust, lean, depend completely, solely, absolutely on the Lord at all times at all times um, god made us to be eternally happy and the bible as god's guidebook to that happiness the bible as god's guidebook to that happiness god made us to be eternally happy and gave us his word the canon of scripture his inerrant infallible word to secure and give us a guide to the happiness. Our lesson today is, watch this, wise up and get wisdom. We should yearn and work to become wiser tomorrow than we are today. We should yearn and we should go to work to, to, to become wiser tomorrow than we are today. Please understand that wisdom and understanding cannot be purchased by tuition, but it is a daily, lifelong process of growth. When the wise man says in Proverbs 4, 5, get wisdom, get insight, he does not simply mean go to school and take more courses. Now, that may certainly be a part, most often is a part of God's plan. But the command to get wisdom is for all of us, is for all of God's children. The command to get wisdom is not relegated to a few, but it's for all of God's children. Let me illustrate this for a moment. My, my late grandfather, uh, Dickon O.C. Hayes Sr., um, uh, during the time in which he grew up, didn't have opportunity to secure even, to finish even elementary school. He had literally a fourth grade education, as much as that would have meant for a Negro in the Deep South during that time. He had a fourth grade education. But my, my grandfather, he was a wise man. He was a God-fearing wise man. And because of that, he built businesses, he built houses, and Generations now are still um, being blessed by his wisdom. So here's my point. We need to be educated, but education alone does not mean you will be wise. So when Proverbs says, get wisdom, get insight, it is not simply saying go get more courses. It is telling us that it is important for us to seek the face and the word of God for our wisdom. What is the importance of getting wisdom? What is the importance of getting wisdom? What does this mean? How can we do it? And why is it so important for us to have meaning? The wisdom matter. Well, let's talk about it. We already have established that all human beings seek happiness. We've already established that that's not a bad thing, but that is actually a good thing. Now, the reason that getting wisdom is important is because of Proverbs 3 and 13. Proverbs 3, verse 13. Someone let me know how's the Wi-Fi going now. Proverbs 3 and 13. 
it says there, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gets understanding. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gets understanding. Hold on one second, please. Happy is a man that finds wisdom and the man who gets understanding. And then Proverbs 24, 13 through 14 says, My son, eat honey, for it is good. And the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. As is wisdom to our souls. If you find it, there will be a future and your hope will not be cut off. Um, in other words, by means of wisdom, you secure a hope-filled future. Wisdom is the key to lasting happiness. Now, I know that many of you are talking about, well, preachers always tell us we don't need happiness, we need joy. No, I, I beg to differ. Joy is a fruit of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But I wouldn't want just to have joy and not have some happiness. I would like to be happy sometimes. Happiness is what I see. Nobody wants to walk around and be sad and, and mad and and disappointed all the time. Yes, we seek happiness. It doesn't mean we got to walk around with a pasted smile, but, but we want to be content. As a matter of fact, the word blessed literally means happy and content. Um, wisdom is the key to lasting happiness. Proverbs 19, 8 says this, he who gets wisdom loves himself. He who gets wisdom loves himself. So you and I must get wisdom. Proverbs 8, 32 through 36 sums up the means to happiness. In Proverbs 8, wisdom is personified. And wisdom herself is actually speaking. In speaking, it says, and now, my sons, listen to me. Happy are those who keep my ways, the ways of the wise. Happy is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, wasting, waiting rather beside the door. For he who finds me, wisdom is speaking, he who finds me finds life. Here's something else, all of you are so deep. Here's he who finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. And I'm not one of those prosperity favor preachers all the time. I got favor. I love favor. I walk in favor. Amen. But I understand now, as I've been re revisiting this whole concept of, of wisdom, that wisdom helps me obtain favor from the Lord. Somebody type in, get wisdom. But he who misses me injures himself. All, listen, wisdom speaking out of Proverbs 8. All who miss me loves death. In other words, not necessarily dying, but it means love, unfruitfulness. Love death. If we do not make it our aim to get wisdom, we will suffer injury and fruitlessness. Therefore, the command to get wisdom is very important. Now, Proverbs 16, 16 says this, to get wisdom is better than gold. Thank you all, I need to know you there. To get wisdom is better than gold. To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Now, most of my young life, I went around trying to get all I could get and all I got. But I understand, I found that you can get all that you get and can all that you get, amen, and find out that you have nothing because it doesn't last. It's fleeting. Wisdom is greater than all the silver and all the gold. 
Amen. As a matter of fact, the reason why getting wisdom is important, here it is, is because it is a matter of life and death. Now, I'm not talking about existing. I'm not talking about breathing. I'm talking about your heart pumping. While that's important as well, I'm talking about Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I didn't get saved just to go to heaven. I got saved because I wanted my life transformed. Proverbs 16, 16, it says it is a matter of life. Ultimate eternal happiness that all people long for will only be found by those who first seek and get wisdom. Please understand that not all happiness comes from true wisdom. Not all happiness comes from true wisdom. Proverbs 15, verse 21. Folly is a joy to him who has no sense. I remember <laughs> my grandma would say to us, we made stupid decisions. We make stupid decisions. He would just say, you just don't have any common sense. Our thirst for happiness is insatiable in the world. In other words, you'll never be satisfied if you seek your happiness in and from the world. Let me say that again. You will never be satisfied. And you'll lack a lot of contentment if you only seek your happiness from the world. A lot of people think if I just keep climbing this corporate ladder, I'll be happy. Some other athletes think if I break that record, I'll be happy. Scholars think if I just get that next degree or I have to just publish that next book, I'll be happy. Gamblers may find it in Vegas or Reno Musicians just want to go platinum. And there's nothing wrong with setting high and aiming high. Setting high goals and aiming high. But what you need for your soul is not come from the world. And please don't, don't get me wrong. Aim high. Try to break that record. Publish that book. Get that PhD. Get everything you want to get, but your ultimate and eternal happiness will only come from walking in and obtaining, let me rephrase that, obtaining and walking in godly wisdom. Obtaining and walking in godly wisdom. The sources for people who seek happiness apart from God, to name a few alcohol, drugs, sex, money, clothing. Some people are even workaholics, just workaholics, overeating, body worship. You know, there's a study that is going for people who who uh, get gym memberships that some, especially males, um, go there to get shame, but end up crossing the line to be gained to worship their body. And, and, and it's an idol. The bodies literally become an idol. So they keep pushing more and more and more. And the more they push, the more they think they'll be happy or have a, a false sense of, of self-esteem. And the world offers us all of these things and we run after it like, like a hamster on a happy trail only realizing that they do not promote the ultimate and eternal happiness that our soul longs for. The ultimate and eternal happiness that we crave is only found in wisdom. Only found. Therefore, it is extremely important to get wisdom. What is wisdom? What are the characteristics of a person who has wisdom. The first characteristic is in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The first characteristic is Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, where we find these words. The fear of the 
law is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is inside. I'm in Proverbs uh, 9, verse 10. The wisdom that leads to life and ultimate joy, ultimate happiness, begins with this, listen, listen, knowing and fearing God. That fearing the Lord means a fear to run away from God. <laughs> A fear to find refuge, as we talked on Sunday. A fear to find joy and hope anywhere other than God. Let me let me pause parenthetically and say this. I believe I'm speaking to some people who can testify that to the fact that we have made some mistakes and we've sought for love in all the wrong places, only to find out that once we obtained what we were aiming for, we were still missing what we needed. I think I just said something. Once we obtained what we were aiming for that was outside of God, we realized that we were still missing what we needed. Is anybody can testify to that? Um, it's important for us. Fear, this fearing the Lord means fearing to stop trusting and depending on God to meet my needs. That's like that proverbial guy in Agor, Proverbs 30. He knew himself. He says, God, do, give me two things before I die. Keep me away from falsehood, and God, don't give me more than I can handle. He said, because if you give me too much, I might forget about you. And God, if you don't give me enough, I might steal. He literally says, God, just give me enough for today. Just, 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 just give me this day my daily bread because I ain't all that yet. If you give me too much earthly stuff, too fast and too furious, I might forget it was you that supplied everything I had. And then God, I'm desperate. I'm still being sanctified. I'm still being molded. He says, don't let me get too little. I might even steal. So give me this day my daily bread. And we need to look at that right now. So I feel the Lord that let me get so much, get a big hand or anything like that, that I might forget who he is. Is there anybody here? This fear of the Lord is fearing to stop trusting God. The fear of the Lord is therefore the beginning of wisdom but also all the other characteristics of wisdom flow from the fear of the Lord like a river flows from a stream, from a spring rather. In other words, as you're really going to be going through Sunday school and talking more about wisdom, I need you to understand that primarily all characteristics of wisdom flow primarily Marrow from the fear of the Lord because it is the beginning and the foundation of wisdom. Here's some examples in Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride comes in, then comes disgrace. But with the humble, there is wisdom. I'm in Proverbs 11, 2. When pride comes in, then comes disgrace. But with the humble, there is wisdom. The wise person is characterized by humility. The wise person, the person who fears the Lord, is humble because he or she depends on God for everything thing and fears to take credit for themselves for what God has done. Oh, don't let me steal the glory that belongs only to God. 
I am what I am only by the grace of God. You are what who you are only by the grace of God. And we must never steal God's glory. The person who is proud uh, does not fear the Lord. Humility is foundational because humility is teachable and open to change and growth. The humble person is teachable and open to change and growth. You know someone is not humble when they're not teachable. And I've come to find out that I've got a lot, I've got a lifelong quest to learn. Because the more I learn, the more I realize I do not know. Humility is foundational because it is teachable and open to change and growth. It, it, no one is proud because they see um, areas of growth in others, but fail to see areas of growth in them. And that is not wise. The proud person does not admit their errors or their need for growth. The proud person does not admit their errors nor their need for growth. Let me say this, if you have a problem with admitting when you have been, when you have, when you are wrong, you are, you are suffering from problem and God detests a haughty spirit. The humble person on the other hand is this, here it is, open to counsel open to godly advice and reason. The humble person who is wise is open to be corrected and follow the truth. Are we talking about the characteristics of a wise person? Someone who is open to counsel. Someone who is open to counsel and follow the truth. Wisdom here now. Um, we got some time here. Wisdom here now is knowing and doing the commandments of God. Wisdom is, wisdom is, wisdom is knowing and doing the commandments of God. Moses says this in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 through 6. Behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinances as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do them. He says, keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of all peoples, Deuteronomy 4, 5 and 6. Jesus picks it up and says the same thing in his own words as recorded in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Hearing and not doing is not wise. A good definition of godly wisdom is this. Hearing and doing God's word. These are people who humbly rely on God for help and who fear to seek happiness anywhere outside of him. There are some people who lay down their religion to mingle with certain crowds or to fit in 
or to be accepted or not to be laid. Let me say this. You and I must grow to the place where we never, ever, never, ever be ashamed of being affiliated with, purchased by, delivered by Jesus, who is the Christ. Jesus said that if you deny before me, I will deny you before my father. No, I'm not saying I gotta run around with labels, titles, designations, and fish on my shirt, crosses around my neck. But listen, if you talk with me long enough, you're gonna know I'm a servant of the Most High God. It's important. We rely on God for help. And we fear to seek happiness or acceptance anywhere else. Therefore, the fear of the Lord is the beginning and the spring of all true wisdom. Oh, I got to move. We got, we're out of time. But watch this. Hearing and doing is not always black and white in the scriptures. We look at this example on Sunday, and we'll look at this example every time we talk about wisdom. Hearing and doing is not always black and white. God's word is not always black and white. So the example that we looked at on Sunday was in First Kings, chapter three, verse sixteen through eighteen, and there we find Solomon. We find this. We find this. Here it is. One day, two prostitutes, two prostitutes came to Solomon. One of them said, my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house. We each gave birth to a son. And one night while she was asleep, she rolled over on her son and smothered him. So she got up at midnight and took my living son from me while I slept and left me with her dead son. When I woke up in the morning and looked closely, I could tell it was not my son. But the other woman said, no. The living child is mine, and the dead child is yours. And so they argued before the king. Then the king said, this is the king, the king said, you both say the living child is yours. I will settle the matter. Bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king, and the king said, cut the living son in two and give half to one woman and half to the other. But the woman whose son was alive yearned for her son and said, no, my Lord, give her the child and by no means slay her. And the other, and the other said, it shall be neither mine nor yours divided. Then the king said, give the living child to the first woman. She is his mother. The story concludes with this observation, 1 Kings 3, 28. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to render justice. There is no, There was no biblical command. There was no chapter and verse to tell Solomon what to do when the two prostitutes claim the same baby. Therefore, wisdom must go beyond simply knowing and doing the word of God. Wisdom must include mature judgment or discernment of how the fear of the Lord should work itself out in all the circumstances that are not specifically addressed in the Bible. Let me say that again. Wisdom must include mature judgment or discernment of how the fear of the Lord should work itself out in all the circumstances not specifically dealt with in the Bible. 
I hope you got it. Now, the only way that happened, beloved, is this. Romans 12, 2. There must be a renewing of the mind. We must walk with the mind of Christ. Because with the mind of Christ comes the wisdom of God. I'm preaching myself into a shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Because I'm seeing how God is working it all together that we have been learning and building line upon line and precept upon precept. I must have the mind of Christ. Now, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, we call this spiritual wisdom. Here it says this, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. We have not ceased to pray for you that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. In other words, somebody type in Colossians 1, 9. I want you to pray that. I want you to pray that as we seek this um, rising up, get wisdom. I need you to pray that. I need you to pray that. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. We have not ceased to pray for you. This is the prayer of the Apostle Paul um, saying that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Oh, that's what we talk about knowing the will of God is important for us to pray to him that he gives us spiritual wisdom and we will know his will, the mind of God. Wisdom follows God's word. Excuse me. Wisdom follows God's word. Wisdom discerns the way to act when there is no clear word from God on a particular situation. You have to have the mind of God and the spirit of wisdom. This is not for those who, are, who think that they can just get wisdom and add it on to them. No, this is the fear of the Lord. This is an intimate fellowship and relationship with God that we can walk in wisdom. It is when we saturate our minds and our hearts with God's word that we gain spiritual wisdom that will guide us in all situations. And let me come out of my notes for a moment and let me say this. Um, life deal to a hand. And most of you know I love play a spade, although I only play it once or twice a year. Life will do a spade's hand where you have no space. But you've got to look at what you have and think of how to communicate with what you have. Life with Jesus will deal with such a hand at times where there are Black and white answers. And life think you go in your prayer closet, shut the door, and say, God, I need wisdom. And I want to say this. I thank God for the wisdom to seek wisdom. That's the title of our talk today. Wise up and get wisdom. It is when we saturate our minds and hearts with God's word that we gain spiritual wisdom to guide us in all things. When the Bible says seek wisdom, get wisdom, it's referring to practical knowledge of how to attain true and lasting happiness which begins with the fear of the Lord by humbly hearing and doing God's will. Uh, friend, I, I wish I could say that again. At the end, you can pause, rewind, and press 
play. Some of these things are coming straight from the Lord and not in my notes. Um, amen. So, so I'm going to listen to it again because I heard myself utter some words that the Lord put in my mouth. So we're going to rewind and press play and hear it again. Amen. Um, for the next few minutes of the mind, for the next few minutes of the mind, um, how can we get with you? How can we get wisdom? Everybody, type in, those of you who are on the phone, say this word, desire. You have to desire wisdom with all your might. You must desire wisdom. Proverbs 4, 8 says this. Praise her highly. Her is wisdom, and she will exalt you. She will honor you for your embrace. Wisdom is to be valuable to us. We must, according to Proverbs 2, seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure. Wisdom. Seek it like silver and search for it like hidden trick. Um, I got a few minutes. So we're going to stop at 7 on the dot. Um, the first thing you get in wisdom is desire wisdom with all your heart. Second thing, second, we must apply ourselves to study and meditate to know the word God and do it. Let me say that again. We must apply ourselves. We must apply ourselves to study, meditate on the, on the word of God, to know and to do, to know and do the word of God. We must. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Therefore, we, you and I, my brothers and sisters, must devote ourselves to know, understand the word of the Lord for the purpose of doing it, not simply knowing it. Not getting a grade, not uh, uh, accomplishing, attending the class, but knowing it, understanding it, meditating on it for the purpose of doing it. The third thing, number three. This is simple. It is simple, but it can be one of our biggest challenges. The third thing we should do is pray. Pray. If you're gonna wise up and get wisdom, you gotta pray. You gotta pray. First Kings chapter three, verse eleven. Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding, standing to turn what is right. Behold, now I do according. Daniel admitted that in himself he had the will. But he said in Daniel 2 30, To thee, O God, my fathers, I give thanks and praise, but thou hast given me wisdom and strength, and hast made known to me what we ask. James makes it extremely clear if in chapter 1, verse 5, if any man, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask. I got a desire to go right. I got to apply this to study and meditation to know the words so I can do it. And number three, I have wisdom that leads to true and lasting happiness. It's not natural, it is supernatural. Wisdom leads to true and lasting happiness, long spiritual life, blessings. Favor of God. 
is not natural. It is supernatural. I like what you wisdom is taking that uh, action. What a sidekick from but wisdom of God. You type this in, remember this. Remember this. Wisdom of God is always practical. Wisdom of God is always practical. God will never ask anything of you that you that He does not empower you and equip you to do. Wisdom can always be put to practice. The wisdom of God is never beyond your ability to have. Wisdom is always practical. That's the side note. But I need to put that X because some of the people are, are texting in. Now, here's another one. Number four, read the proverb. Read the proverbs. I was told as young Christian, I was told as young Christian, read one chapter of the proverbs every day and do this for at least one year. There's 30. One chapter of Proverbs. Read one. Grab a proverb right away. Read grab a proverb for the day. The day is a ten. Read Proverbs ten today. And hold on to one or two of the verses out of Proverbs ten that day. That you'll get wisdom. Number five. Any of you who know me, especially my young people who are now grandparents, this has always been one of my favorite verses. Proverbs thirteen. Verse 20. I've got five minutes. Proverbs 13, verse 20. It says, He who walks with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Proverbs 13, 20. So, number five is hang out with wise people. If you're the wisest person in your circle all the time, you need to expand your circle and get in the circle of somebody who might be a little wiser than you. Hang out with the godly. He who walks with the wise shall be wise or become wise. Number six, apply wisdom. God only gives wisdom to those who apply it to their lives. He doesn't give it to you to satisfy your curiosity. That's John Pipe. He Solomon wrote, My son, don't forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. If we say to God, give me, give me your will, let me have your opinion, and let me see what I can do with it, you'll be sitting there forever trying to get what God wants you to do. Apply wisdom. Number seven. Listen to me carefully. And as we study wisdom, we'll come back to this. Think of the shortness of this life and the infinite length of the next life. Number seven, think of the shortness of this life. I've got three minutes. And the infinite wisdom, infinite length of the next life. I'm in Psalm 90 verse 12, which says, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Here it is. We should often wonder the kind of life we would like to look on and our children and grandchildren to tell when we meet the moment of transition. The choices we make today with godly wisdom will determine the story that is told about our life eternally. Think of the shortness of this life. Don't have a lot of time to walk in wisdom. Finally, there's one is the buzzword essential thing to do 
to wise up. One final thing, I one to do to wise up and get wisdom. Here it is. You've got to have Jesus. Jesus is the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-four. First Corinthians chapter one. Verse 30, others have spoken truth, Solomon, Moses, Daniel, others have spoken truth. Jesus is the truth. Others have pointed the way to life, John the Baptist and others. Jesus is the way, the truth and the light. Others have given promises and even reiterated the promises of God. But all promises of God find their yes, amen, in Jesus. Others have spoken of God's Jesus became our sacrificial lamb and purchased and provided our forgiveness. Therefore, in Jesus, Colossians 2 and 3, this is my closing, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Our brothers and sisters, wise up and get wisdom. I will send you my notes. I will send my notes. I'll send them out by email. Um, if you're not on email, connect with someone who is. And thank you for your time tonight. Try to share this. Try to share it. In, um, not simply on social media, but share it by becoming a living epistle of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Heaven smile greatly on you. All participants are on I bless you, Mr. Keller. I bless you, Mr. Keller. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you all. Praise God. Praise God. For those of you who still see you on the prayer line today at 12 noon and at 6 30. Prayer line 5 noon and 6 30. One of our, our ministers has a Zoom meeting tomorrow. Go to our, our pages, our, our Facebook, my Twitter, and get the link. You want to be there. We want to be there. God bless you. Smile on you. Love you. There's nothing. God bless you.